For more information, please visit our website at darkcybernetics.com. This is Dark Cybernetics Space Shooter Games in SDL2. Follow along with our free course documentation. In this video, we will discuss some implementations for animation and sprite sheeting using the Simple Direct Media Layer version 2.0. The current version of SDL is version 2.0010 and there are also some free softwares available online um, available at these websites. Um, there are many indie games which have been redeveloped and re-advanced using certain tools um, such as TinyXML and there are plenty of free games and other resources available like uh, OpenOffice and Asprite there's a free version for some of these softwares and other tools for math editors. For those of you using Linux, you may need to download um, CMake. And so let's get right into it. Um, there are other tools and other systems available like Game Jams. And if we have Game Jams, those who are not familiar with Game Jams, Game Jams are events where people go to code game projects in a time span. The time span could be some a week, a month, sometimes 24 hours. You can also keep a um, control of your version control using GitHub. And, and if you want to re-engineer software, we would call that reverse engineering. Okay, let's get into the game design part. All right, when we're using the Simple Direct Media Layer, there are several different way, ways to implement programming using the Simple Direct Media Layer. We want to put things onto the canvas. We can use the CPU. Um, there's GPU hardware rendering and there's OpenGL and Vulkan and there's software rendering. These are different ways of rendering games and modern systems. Uh, these of course will change and the rendering pipelines for OpenGL and Vulkan um, vary. If you use a two-dimensional game as opposed to a three-dimensional game, this this may change the way the code looks inside the game project. So before we start coding, we need to talk about certain types of implementation processes. What five essential techniques or topics we need to go into about game engines. We need to start the API, right? The application program interface. We need to turn on STL. And there needs to be some type of updating between the rendering and the events, the event handling queue in STL. Drawing objects using some of the direct media layer is quite simple. There's some input and then we free up memory. Um, the event structure and the drawing structure kind of go hand in hand and then between logic the order and it's the three middle pieces is seemingly relative, relevant, but if it's, you know, you're know you using classes and other headers, this um, structuring looks a bit different in real-time programming. So we just look at it by itself, we, we turn the game on, turn on the simple direct media layer by doing what's SDL init. Uh, we call events to event queue for our actions inside of our game loop. Um, we do updates for rendering and drawing and player movement. Um, for after we, this, this is around the same time we push the input and then for our input we have some kind of drawing and it also could be inside this area here the drawing and rendering could be sound right and then we would destroy all the things outside the game loop all right so let's move on so things we're going to cover now we're talking about SDL texture um, SDL free surface we have a surface here there's a uh, cube texture and there's load texture and there's um, render a set draw color some of these features are required for using the SDL image header. If you have not experimented using the Simple Direct Media Layer version 2.0, there are other libraries which are useful for manipulating game projects. So, what about animation? Well, for animating things inside of um, well, our game, we need to worry about using the modulus. Modulus holds the remainder. So we have, we have some initialization of a variable. Suppose we had a game logo across the top and we had to go into start and option menu and you know we need to worry about how we can hold this on the computer because sometimes you may need to use what we call an image class um, for a sprite sheets image because the images are different sizes and we might need some way of um, structuring or cycling through it's just suppose we had start option and exit menu we need some way of um, controlling the way we um, produce certain uh, clip outs so suppose all the sprites were different sizes suppose that the, we use the start menus or um, this is what is that uh, 128 by uh, 64 or, or somewhere or not or by 96 and we, twin, we went over or we're using some other pieces like we were, we were rendering the um, the game logo uh, other things in SDL which are different to a lot of other 
languages, we can use hexadecimal notation to, to denote colors. Suppose inside the, um, the logo we had some other colors, like there's red inside this logo. If we want to remove the red, we could use um, other features of SDL to remove that, or use them for a special effect, or, or blur the colors. So if we have not installed SDL, there's inside of code blocks, there is a simple process. We turn on the build options, search options, we find the, the include um, directories, and you know the, the path thing is based on the particular version. If you're using a 64-bit system as opposed to a, a i32-bit system, we, we would um, of course st structure between those two. All right. So um, in, in independent frame um, rate animation, we want to have some type of elapsed time that we relegate. So we want it to be 60 frames a second. We will take, uh, we will subtract our, pr our current time from our previous time by like using SDL get ticks, and we would uh, call, we can call SDL delay, which is takes time back in milliseconds, and we can subtract those two dates. And if the time does not meet our our queue time, right, we want it to be a certain time, we can, we can drop it back to zero or, or shoot it to sixty, wherever we need it to be. Okay. So what's important for our game? Well, if we're using OpenGL, there's two different types of size of screens we can use for our game for as a start pro process. We could go full screen, right? We just, we just simple as a, as a Boolean flag here. We can go and set it to SD underscore full screen or SD underscore um, resizable, right? So we have uh, for our screen object. All right, the two other things we need to talk about. Um, Double buffering, it's a technique for reducing latency on the screen so we won't have a flickering effect, so the screen looks stable and smooth. And software rendering, as we did not go over it before, it talks about um, uh, graphic processing, we're just using the CPU for that. You know, there's certain systems, if you're familiar with DirectX or other graphical systems, there are other ways of doing this in Java, you can do it, it has its own uh, functions for that. Uh, about sprite sizes, well, Sprites and tiles are practically the same, but the way we parent the sprites and tiles, suppose our player was a certain size and our boss was a different size, there are different ways to keep that inside of the computer. We can have a, a, a row and column format, or we can have a certain set size for the tiles and the players or the enemies or the bosses. All right, so if everyone thinks the same size, there's no problem, but if everything's different sizes, we need to look over that. All right. Event handling this deal. Well, to take in input for keys, we use key that system that SYM for keyboard keyboard presses. There are also other uh, handling event actions such as the mouse motion and pressing other keys on a screen like Escape. Well, let's talk about colors. When you say that a game has 16 million colors for project, what we mean we have a value for green, red, and blue, and green, red, and blue go to 256 and so if, if we need more colors uh, we're using alpha you know it would be um, a, a magnitude 12 you know 20, 256 times 256 times 256 for three colors we have 16 million colors as we were about the possible combinations of colors okay so regulating frames per second is another implementation of frames per second we can say the frame rate is 60 and our start time is zero and our time is, is a thousand so we could just um, divide the time and subtract the time using SDL delay. We will put this inside our game loop. Okay, rotating the sprites. You can also rotate in SDL. We just use SDL render copy or SDL render flip, and we want to know if it's um, a horizontal, vertical, or, or not to have one at all. Right? Simple, very simple in SDL. All right. We can worry about animations in SDL. Um, we can use bitmap, PNG, other uh, file types. This requires the image header, right? And we need to know about the, the decision about the number of animations for each player and each character. For mapping the button actions, suppose we, we may have more buttons actions for a game because of the size and the, the, the type of games. So if this is a space shooter game, we may have that may not, not have as many buttons as a fighting game, as you would imagine. And so if, they if you're regulating the speed for, for frames per second for a fighting game as opposed to a space shooter game, we may need to regulate the frames based on, like, suppose there were 60 animations for a game as opposed to 8 animations for a game, right? So about color. Color is important. It's not so important because people are colorblind, but the color for the background and the foreground need to be differentiated. 
are just enough to where we can tell the game from the player. So, and sometimes using a black border or a border around the character is important if you did not differentiate the front, the foreground from the background. One way to go through it is use a for loop for the player animation, and we suppose we start at zero, and the player went through five for different states of the player. Um, of course, this will be a lot longer, and for each particular key press, we will go through the implementation, right? So we go through, we start at zero, one, and it really depends on how the sprite sheet works. So since the game is in such an early development process, we would need to know um, what just a generalization of what we want to accomplish inside of our sprite sheet before we start coding. Because once we start things, doing coding and start removing things, there's always a problem. And, and then that's what, you know, one, people, one reason people um, postpone and delay things. What, what a project is really about, really going over and revisioning certain aspects. So for tiles and background coloring, which is, you know, minuscule, so about, you know, what what's important, what's not really important about um, game planning. Um, each set of palette for the player and the tile should be different. We, we won't use the same foreground colors we use for background colors because they might blend in. You know, it's kind of hard for the player to see uh, a rock that's black on the black background, right? Uh, moving ahead for edit colors. We call this the edit color, or, or what character color, as well as color is this purple, this magenta color. Well, 256, 256 um, color, it's not a common color for many games. Now, some players just use gray, because gray is what they usually use for three-dimensional games. Okay, so how do we get these colors for a tube television monitor? Well, for red, green, and black, uh, we, uh, if you're familiar with uh, computer graphics, uh, we get our colors based on for phosphorus, when we ignite the, the um, their diodes, and once we ignite them with electrons, they you know they, they turn a color. And so if we um, excite all the, the phosphorus colors, we get white, right? And if we want to produce other colors, we have a mixture of these colors. Um, it's really equal to the number of the, the level of intensity for the colors. So if we want pure colors, there's, there's a big difference between color. We'll get into that later. But for, but for right now, we won't really be concerned about colors. And it's just it's a common question that comes up in, in computer graphics or in, even in game design. How do we get these colors? We only have a set number of colors. How do we get purple? Or how do we get red and yellow? So just because we combine the, the uh, uh, respective colors. Okay, so what we're we talking about now. We have sprites. And for each particular sprite, it's because we call that a frame. And inside a sprite sheet, there are a collection of related images. And for our individual color, it's a pixel, right? And for there are two different types of uh, common for two dimensional games for perspectives. We have orthographic and isometric. Um, our isometric is a diamond shape, and our orthographic is a traditional square shape. And the coding for an isometric map as opposed to a, a orthographic map are different, completely different when rendering. Uh, in the isometric background, the tiles lay over one another, and a slanted, staggered perspective. Right. So for SDL, we back to SDL. We we would need to make sure that our SDL two DLLs in the folder. The other SDL DLLs we might need to concern ourselves with. If this is not in the project folder, we'll produce produce an error. If you've uh, tried to compile the SDL code, um, you will notice that the SDL DLL even if, even if the version is different. So if you have a thirty two bit system or thirty two bit program, we need to put the thirty two bit DLL. This this um, also needs to be reevaluate it before we produce a game project. You know, some developers produce a folder for a 32-bit version and a 64-bit version and be aware that it will not run without this, these files in the project folder. One problem that also comes up is where do we put the files? Um, suppose we had a lot of files and all the files were um, different. Right? Some of the files were images, some of them were sound files, other files. Um, we generally put those files inside the bin folder of the executable. This is at, after we've completed our project. Alright, so if we want to change the background SDL, we could, we could call, um, we're going to set the render draw color, and we just have to, we can just do that simply by changing the um, RGB values in alpha in this time for the function for the draw set color function. Alright? So when we change the background, we need to load in an image and if we're using bitmap format, if we're using image format, we use a different complete. It's a 
a subtle difference, but the DLL for the SDL header needs to be inside of the build directory as well. Okay, well moving on to um, the deconstructor for the image header, we would need to have the textures and we would destroy the textures, right? This is the deconstructor. So regulating movement speed for frames per second, we have one frame over 60 seconds and we want to decrement based on the operations, right? So if we have movement speeds, it really depends on how you, you, you made your games. If it's um, more than 60 frames a second or if you have some other variable to control this, it will be different. There's two different types of rendering, right? There's time-based animation and frame-based animation. All right, two different types of animation. So time-based animation may be for you know, a cutscene or something, right? And then frame-based animation may be for an animated sprite sheet. Or right? for the start menu, maybe you the time-based, and your frame-based animation may be for your player or your enemies. Okay. So for those of you who are not familiar with programming, I've, I've seen several students complain about not being able to program. Um, for an array, if we had an integer, we could store a value for an array position by making curly brackets and making commas. Um, for for loops, for loops is generally used for progressing over maps. All right. Something we will get down to when we start programming. So for bitmaps, we represent each um, corresponding um, image. And for SDL texture, we have a structuring of textures representing pixel data. Cropping is we remove uh, unuseful images, imagery from a, a photograph or an illustration. And we say a pixel, we talk about pixel, pixels individual color. So for creating classes, definitions for a frame, we, we may go something like this. Inside the game loop, we may need some type of um, delta or changing value to represent the idea of motion. Inside the function, we need to get some type of um, delta value again. Um, for those of you who want to use pixel data, we, we need to um, look at the um, documentation for the wiki page for SDL underscore pixel format. So, so you, we need to, mind, need to know the mass color, um, the bit type of pixel, and the color palette, which is very important when we produce a game project. The structuring for a game, it may do something like there's a main file, there's usually a, a game header or a header file and they generally end in a .cpp file, .h file for a C++ program. Okay. Well, for our checklist for our program, there's going to be some type of window header, there's a renderer for parts we draw, and there's some type of surface for the textures, right, for the canvas elements. And for an event, we go into the event object queue, and there's a boolean for the game loop. Simple things. about parenting sprites, we will not need to draw all the animations. In this example, we have a long bar we use for, I guess, GUI elements or inventory space. We can just keep this, the portions of the screen that are necessary. Just need the middle piece and the side corners. And we can produce any shape or structure we need after that. If we need it to be a square, we just get the sides and push it back together, right? It can be a larger square, for vision, but we just, just copy-paste it. All right, so what we need to do in SDL? Well, if we want to load an image to the screen, we need to know the required image format, and we've always put it in quotes, all right? And a slash indicates a folder. So we need to know what image we are, so we go across, suppose it, this is a four by three, so you can understand that, right? Um, there's a, with an SDL surface, we go across, we need a certain number, um, the algorithm will go in, in the middle, this middle section here, and we will go forward by freeing the surface. Also in SDL, we can set um, the background and remove colors. If we need to go about removing a certain pa color palette, and one of, the, one of the most important things about designing graphics and for using for animation and spriting is um, making sure that there are enough colors. Right, that there are enough colors to differentiate the foreground from the background from the player from the background. And for more information, 
please visit our website at darkcybernetics.com.